yes, I don't think that I need it. I don't, I'm not afraid of COVID, but there absolutely is a, a bigger burden on my heart to be, um, you know, a part of speaking up for people that can't speak up for themselves. This is a basketball team. It's a basketball franchise that he signed up to play for. And to me, he's being selfish. For some odd reason, you know, people love to have my name in the mix of just some BS. He has spoken on a multitude of issues on many occasions. He hasn't spoken about this, numer despite numerous opportunities that he's had to do so. With the start of the NBA season fast approaching, players and fans alike are preparing for a year in which arenas are expected to once again be full, and yet the NBA is experiencing an unexpected controversy as players prepare for the start of the regular season. Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving will not be allowed to practice or play until he is vaccinated, saying that he is choosing to not get the shot because people are losing their jobs due to vaccine mandates. Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards questioned why people with the vaccine can still get and transmit the virus, and Jonathan Isaac of the Orlando Magic gave a thorough press conference on why he has decided to abstain from the vaccine. Um, with my current um, age group and uh, uh, fitness, physical fitness level, um, it's not necessarily a fear of mine. We sit down with Isaac to discuss his vaccine stance, the media's response to it, as well as the upcoming NBA regular season. Jonathan, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, I wanted to start actually at first a little bit about just your faith and how that plays into your life because I've been, you know, we've been reading about you for a good amount of time now and, and seeing some of your statements. How does that play into your life? Has that always been, have you have you always been into your faith your whole life or is this something that's relatively new for you? You know, I, I wouldn't say always. Uh, to give you the short version, I grew up Christian. My, my dad always had us in church all the time. But as I got to uh, Florida after my plans, my parents split up when I was 10, uh, basketball just took over everything. And uh, it became my identity. Like I, f I found my purpose, I found my passion, I found everything in the game. Where if I played well, I was up. If I played bad, I was down. And then I went on this journey of just coming coming to Orlando, getting drafted and figuring out that everything that I thought that I wanted in life, uh, it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be once I attained it by getting to the NBA. And I started to get back to my roots and found out that God wasn't trying to take anything from me, that he was trying to get something to me that was a real relationship that I could find all the things that I found in basketball and found out in the world. I could find in him and they wouldn't take from me like they did, you know, in those other places. So I'm glad I did it. It's been the best decision that I've made so far. And I've just continued to walk it out and, and continue to grow as a man. You know, I know in in the bubble in Orlando, um, you decided to stand um, when, when others were kneeling. I'm curious, yeah. was that something, did, did that tie in to your faith or was that kind of a different decision altogether? No, it, it, it was the whole thing. Uh, yeah. You know, my, my faith was, was pretty much for me saying that uh, you know, I, I see what everybody else is seeing. I see the division. I see the the black versus white. But not only that, I see the the heartache of the world. You know, we've continued to kind of go in circles with this debate on uh, racism. But there are a lot of things that are wrong with society, with people. People are hurting and people feel hopeless. And I, for myself, know that Jesus has been the answer for me and my life. And I wanted to offer that as an answer. Um, uh, you know, on that platform to say, you know, again, I see what I see what's going on. I see what's happening, but I believe that Jesus is the answer for the world. That summer obviously was a, a, a difficult time, right? With everything that was going on, obviously being in the pandemic and from the NBA level, um, obviously, you know, with Black Lives Matter, th that was a, a big part of the NBA in Orlando. So sure. did you have to deal with any any pushback from from teammates directly? Did that change anything within the locker room? I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't say division. You know, me and my teammates, we had a conversation. Uh, it, it was a good one where, you know, we were all able to express um, how we felt. And it pretty much came down to, you know, I, I respected your decision to kneel. Um, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, good that came out of it, too. Um, and, I, and that's the, what I chose to focus on. It was actually a lot more good um, than negative. Well, let's. Um dive a little bit into the news of, I guess, the last couple of months. It is my belief that the, the vaccine status of every person should be their own choice um, and completely up to them without the without bullying, without being pressured or without being forced into doing so. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm uncomfortable with taking the vaccine at this time. I think that we're all different. We all come from different places. We've all had different experiences and hold dear to different beliefs. And uh, what it is that you do with your body when it comes to putting medicine in there uh, should be your choice, um, free of the ridicule and the opinion of others. What has formed your thoughts as far as the COVID vaccine and your decision to not take it? So, uh, you know, what, it, what has formed my thoughts is honestly just been, you know, watching everything that has been going on. 
uh, you know, I, I feel that I'm pretty, you know, well read and understanding of the, the science behind all of it. Uh, and then understanding that I had it before, I think the science is clear that, um, you know, nat immunity that by natural infection, you know, it, to some degree is better, um, you know, than vaccine immunity. And that's pretty, you know, standard, um, you know, with my age group and my, uh, you know, current fit, physical fitness level, I'm, I'm just, it's, it's not something that I feel the need to do. Um, and then when you look at the vaccine that doesn't stop infection or transmission, it, it is your choice if you want to take that step to protect yourself. But like I said, because of, um, you know, the science behind natural immunity, you know, where I am and just the overall statistics of, you know, COVID survival rate and all the things that's going on, it was to, to me, it was a, an easy decision. Um, and then when you think about, you know, I, I, I stated in, in the press conferences, but albeit it's rare, there are, you know, instances of adverse reactions to the vaccine. There's been, um, you know, studies that say if you've had COVID, you know, you're you're at a higher chance, even though it is a still small chance, a higher chance of having an adverse reaction to the vaccine once you take it. Um, yeah. You know, myocarditis in young men under 30, uh, you know, to me wasn't uh, taken seriously in the beginning. But now you have countries like Sweden and other places who have stopped giving the Moderna virus, I mean, vaccine to, uh, you know, young men under 30. So I, th I think there's a lot of things that make this conversation nuanced. It's not black and white. It's not one side or the other. Um, and I think it should be up to everybody, you know, to to, to weigh the, the evidence and the science and to make that decision for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I agree completely. I, I think there is a thought in society that there is, quote, misinformation when it comes to this stuff. Um, so I'm curious, like, do you have specific places, doctors that you go and you read to get information that you, in order to come to this conclusion? I wouldn't say specific doctors that I read. I've, I've been in conversation with a couple. You know, our, our, our team doctor is one um, that I've spoken to, you know, in the time past and uh, uh, some other doctors that I've connected with. Um, but, but even on the misinformation, you know, point that you mentioned, this really all came to, to fruition by the Rolling Stone article um, that had came out on me. Uh, you know, being an anti-vaxxer and anti-science. And that was my first, you know, kind of welcoming to misinformation. You know, when I decided to do the, decided to do the article, I was like, you know what, here's this Rolling Stone article, this guy, he seems, you know, to be in good faith, wanting to get my perspective on the vaccine um, that I had the same as that I had during the press conference. And to see myself be completely, like just a, <laughs> completely misrepresented in every fashion, um, that was the eye opener for me. Like, man, this is bigger than a vaccine. It's bigger. You would think that, you know, everyone who is saying, you know, this is so important and people are losing lives. You would want to, you know, correctly articulate, articulate the position of, you know, somebody, you know, of my stature in the NBA um, and Kyrie's and other people, but that that wasn't the case. And so, um, you know, if, if someone is going to say there's misinformation on one side, I think there can be a, a great case for misinformation on the other. That's interesting, actually. So you, you went into that Rolling Stones article with the intention of just kind of having a conversation about it and came out on the other side, you know, with the information that had come out of that article completely different than the way you wanted it actually viewed. Exactly. <laughs> 100%. And, uh, you know, but, but partly I'm, I'm glad it happened because it, it gave me the opportunity to then come on the press conference. Everybody read it and everybody was like, how is Jonathan even thinking this way? And so, um, you know, I, I think that goes partly into my decision not to take the vaccine as well, is that, you know, this thing has been made bigger than just a vaccine and people have tried to reduce it to, it's just a vaccine, take the shot or not take the shot. You know, you should take it because it protects you, um, but it has become bigger than that. It has become politicized. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that people have become weaponized to a degree to beat people up who don't want to take it or have their reservations, um, you know, it's become much more than a vaccine. I'm curious when it comes to, you know, obviously you were speaking of the antibodies and being protected because you've had COVID. In society today, we don't really talk about the antibodies all that much as either get the vaccine or you don't get to do a whole lot. In the NBA, is that are those conversations happening as far as, look, I've had this before, I don't think I need to get the vaccine, or is it still as it is in society, get the vaccine or you don't get to do certain things? Uh, th that seems to be the case. You know, I, I would love, um, you know, for there to be more conversation, um, you know, in the league dialogue about um, natural immunity and, and, and what the science is showing us. I, like I said, I think that, that the science is clear that, you know, immunity from natural infection is uh, robust and long lasting. Um, and there shouldn't be, um, you know, re restrictions for guys who, um, who have recovered from COVID and um, you know, especially obviously for guys who have decided to go on and take the vaccine. Uh, but there is. And so that's that's something that we're working through when the season's about to get started. And so, you know, there will be restrictions in place. Like I can't eat with my teammates, um, you know, and other things going on, which I don't think, you know, you know, coherently follow the data. 
Is that impacting the locker room at, at any level, you having to be separated? Uh, no, uh, you know, every, everything really hasn't been enforced yet. Uh, but, okay. you know, you know, the guys on my team, you know, we, we, we've been cool and we've been rocking. So I, I don't expect it to be um, anything, uh, you know, that that divides us. I think they know where I'm coming from. You know, it's it's from a healthy place. Uh, I, I'm not doing this, uh, you know, just for me. Um, and, and there's that there's that whole, you know, if you don't take the vaccine, you're selfish. Um, but, man, but man, I'm looking out and I'm seeing people that are losing their jobs. I'm seeing people whose, you know, religious freedom and personal, you know, bodily autonomy are being threatened. And, and that's not something that I think this country stands for and that, you know, I can stand for um, in just, you know, taking the vaccine just to take it. And so, yes, I don't think that I need it. I don't, I'm not afraid of COVID, but there absolutely is a, a bigger burden on my heart to be, um, you know, a part of speaking up for people that can't speak up for themselves. I think I've seen just from the outside that, NBA players as a whole have actually been pretty supportive of their For teammates sure. who decide that they're not going to do it. I, I generally find that it's actually the reporters asking the questions that seem to not understand people such as yourself who are taking a different approach. Is, is that an accurate assessment? Yeah, I mean, I mean, take LeBron. You know, Le LeBron yeah. came out and he said, you know, I, I, I took the vaccine. My, my family is taking the vaccine. I've done the research and that's a step that I wanted to take. But that wasn't enough. You know, they, they then needed him to, you know, demand that everyone or encourage everybody else to do so and when he wasn't willing to you know he you know he, he got the the backlash from that that he received but Le Le lebron is okay if they're turning on lebron i i, I don't I, they'll turn on anybody at, at this point um question for you about about kyrie um obviously we we heard him speak you know what would you do you know if if you felt uncomfortable going into the season uh when you were promised that you would have exemptions or that you didn't have to be forced to get the vaccine. Have you had a chance to, to talk to him at all? I haven't. I haven't spoken to Kyrie about, you know, the situation. No. You know, obviously his situation is a little bit different, right? Being in, in Brooklyn and, and being in, yeah. in New York City where he's not going to be able to play basketball games at home and now he's not going to be able to play or practice. Um, just from, from your perspective, I mean, do, do you think that's something that would change your thoughts on it, right? As far as taking the vaccine and having to then lose millions of dollars, because he is on the hook for a, lo a lot of lost money here. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, honestly, for me, uh, it, it's not something that would change my opinion. Um, and, and, you, you know, I, I have great respect for Kyrie and, and what he's doing. Um, again, there's that whole, you know, he's being selfish to the, the, the Brooklyn Nets, his teammates and the fans. But, you know, anybody who's willing to go through what he's gone through and give up what he's willing to give up is, is somebody that cares very deeply about what they're doing. Um, and I know for him, based on what he was saying, it's not about him. It's about the people, you know, that, that I agree the sentiment that there are people who are struggling and, and feel stranded and, uh, you know, uh, betrayed, you know, to a degree in this country. People who were on the front lines protecting us, defending us. Um, when COVID was around, when there was no vaccine, um, you know, now who, the people who are essential now, you know, are are, are not um, to a degree that they're 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 you know in the fires to get you know to be fired, and so um, you know, great respect for Kyrie and what he's doing. It takes an immense amount of courage and boldness to stand up like he is, and you know, under the scrutiny that he has been under <laughs> every single day. You see the media kind of turning on him now, because um, you know all the, he's. This isn't the first time he spoke out about, let's say, a societal yeah. issue, right? I mean, he, Kyrie's done a lot for the community. Um, he has a lot of a lot of things that he stands for, and he has no problem speaking about them. And from what I've seen, the media has supported him all the way up until this point. And it's like this is the one area that we refuse to to really support. I mean, Stephen A. Smith was yelling on ESPN the other day about Kyrie and how they, he shouldn't even be there. I find that interesting. I mean, if you noticed that, that a lot of NBA players have stood for many things over the years and the yeah. media seems to support them. But when it comes to this specific issue, they want nothing to do with it. You know, man, the the, the media has such an important role to play, um, you know, in everyday life. They're usually the first, uh, you know, the, the first ones to break stories and to get things out in front of people. Um, and, you know, to do a degree, I feel like they have been uh, you know, used in, in a way from the, 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 the top down with just the, the fear mongering and, and the, the position that a lot of people are taking when it comes to COVID um, and, and the media especially. And so, uh, like I was talking about with, with the interviews with LeBron and the things that, that came out and then now Kyrie, it's unfortunate, um, you know, that the media is being used in this way. 
Do you see yourself, obviously the NBA season's getting ready to kick off. Do you see you having to have these conversations almost on a daily, weekly basis about if you've changed your mind or your stance on the COVID vaccine for the really the rest of this season? I'm, I'm expecting it, but you know, they haven't been every day. Uh, I haven't had to continue to explain myself, but but I've been open, you know, like anybody who, you know, who, who is willing to have a conversation, I'm willing to have a conversation with because I really do, you know, believe that this is so much bigger than basketball, like Kyrie understands. Kyrie understands the principle of, of, of freedom um, and the fact that we can fight COVID and defend freedom simultaneously. It doesn't have to be one at the other or one at the other's ex expense. And uh, so it, it, it's, it's bigger than all of this. And I, I'm trying to get people, you know, to see that and to understand that and understand that, um, you know, we, we don't want to set the precedent that in light of any emergency, your religious freedom and bodily autonomy become negotiable, you know, by, by the people who are in power and the people who agree with those in power. Yeah, that's an interesting point, actually. Moving forward, th there is a precedent for the government to be able to dictate what you put in your body. Is that something that go that, that is in your thought process during this time? I would say, yeah, I was I would say at the end of the day, you know, when, when things like this happens, they they, they tend to snowball. Um, if, if you if you look back in our uh, in nation in our nation's history or just, you know, uh, nations everywhere. Um, but at, at the same time, even your job. You know, if, if there's a precedence that said that if if there is something that we want you to do, expect you to do, need you to do, um, your job can be in question. And, and, and you know, I've, I've seen I've seen countless stuff on, you know, social media where people say, you know, bullying works um, and mandates work. And, and because people are saying I have to do this to keep my job. Um, and I don't think that is something that is going to last uh, or be fruitful, you know, in our future. I want to take a little switch. I want to talk some hoops. I cover, I'm you know, sure. I, I am a sports reporter. Um, My length. You, yeah, you, you got a new coach. What's that been like? Obviously, there's, there's always a transition when you have a different leadership. H has there been any change from, from Clifford to Mosley? Yeah, for sure. There's, there's been a lot of change, but you know, honestly, I have to give such just a round of applause to, co to Coach Jamal. It has not seemed like it's his first gig, um, and that speaks to just preparation. Um, you know, his willingness to, to, to to be open-minded and to get feedback and, and you know, learn from the people around them and even players and stuff. So it, is, it has been a fantastic experience so far um, these first couple of months of him being around and not just him, but the entire coaching staff. You know, our, our team is, is loving, you know, the direction that we're heading in, the energy, uh, the togetherness, the, the youth that we, that we have right now and we're cultivating so for the future. So I'm, I'm all good. Uh, you know, I, I really, really enjoy Coach Mosley. For this season, obviously you, this is a different team after the trades that occurred last year, right? I mean, you guys are, this, this is a young team. Are there certain goals that you got, that you are setting for yourself with with a young roster? Do you view yourself as a leader of these guys? I, I would say one of them, we have a lot of voices in the in the locker room that are strong and that, um, you know, can lead us in the right direction. Uh, but but for us, it's like with, with young team comes, you know, comes the ups and downs of the season. You know, we have so much learning to do as a group. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm mostly, you know, expecting or looking forward to is the challenge and how we choose to go about overcoming it because the challenge is going to come um but um i think with the talent that we have um the iq that we have as a group and as a coaching staff if we can you know navigate the challenges of the season correctly we are you know on the path to greatness for for you health wise right i mean obviously you don't have to dive into everything but just throughout your career obviously you've been dealing with some injuries. I mean, how do you feel coming into this season? Um, is there any different, even preparation that you've gone through as far as just the rehabbing in order to get to 100% healthy in order to play? Uh, rehab has been every single day. It feels like every every moment of every day. But um, you know, it, it, it's it's made me better. It's been challenging. Um, but just it's just been taking it one day at a time. You know, my my timeline is still you know not the 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 most clear. Um, but I'm just, I'm growing, I'm, I'm on the court, I'm shooting, I'm running, I'm doing all these things, I'm jumping. Um, but it's just about continuing to build strength around my quad and my hamstring. So I'm getting there, you know, I feel good. Every, you know, every time I get on the court, I feel better and better. My shot is looking great. And so I've been able to work on some other things outside of, um, you know, being on the court. Last question for you. I, I'm just curious, the Ben Simmons situation in Philadelphia fascinates me. Um, is there any talk within NBA circles about that? I mean. We're, we're kind of entering into this new world now of with, with contracts, right? So he's got a few years left on his contract and he has stated that he wants out. Are those conversations that happen within an NBA locker room about, obviously player empowerment is a big deal, but how far can you take it when you're demanding a trade? 
Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of players are kind of just watching yeah. in, in suspense of, you know, what is going to happen or what's going to give. And I think whatever does happen then, you know, gives leeway to the future about, you know, like you said, player empowerment and the, the ability to request a trade or one out or, or demand your way out. Um, you know, how that carries on and it may influence another player too. So I think that even ties into this whole thing with these uh, <laughs> with these vac vaccine mandates. Yep. And so, uh, so, so yeah, so, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely something that we're all watching. We're going to see what happens. Um, you know, I, I feel for Ben. I, you know, I understand the, the organization's aspect, but I, I feel for him um, and, you know, just want him to be, you know, happy wherever he ends up. Look, man, I can't believe the NBA season is literally a couple days away. It feels like I was just watching the NBA finals. So, look, man, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I'm excited to, to see what you do, obviously, um, th this season. And once again, we really appreciate you, you speaking out and speaking your mind. And we look forward to speaking with you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you, my man. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for having me.